Module 27 Classes and Modules Object oriented programming is a programming paradigm. That means it's a style of programming. It lets you create objects that all have the same features or attributes. Think about an object as a real life object, for example, a rose. The rose has a color, a size, a type, etc. These are the attributes of it. Other plants like the lily have the same attributes. They would be objects of the class plant. Once you've declared a class, you can create instances of it. So we have a plant class, and then we can write code to declare a plant called the rose, and another that is a lily, and we can set each one to have a color and a size, etc. You've already used a lot of classes without knowing about it. Image is a class. The image class sets out what an image has to have. When you use the code image, you are declaring a new instance of the class. So here we have declared a new object of type image. We've set its LED values and stored it under the identifier cross image. Classes also have methods, and these are actions that you perform on the object or with the object. These are lots of methods for images, most of which you will never need, and far too many to go through in detail. But here are a couple. On line 4, the dot height method returns the height of the image. This is stored in the variable image height. On line 5, the dot width method returns the width of the image. This is stored in the variable image width. Dot get underscore pixel takes two numbers as the pixel position. The first digit is the x coordinate from 0 to 4, and the second is the y coordinate from 0 to 4. So, this will return the brightness of the pixel at position 0, 0, which is 9. A module is the library that you import with lots of functions that you can use. You've imported lots of these, such as random, sound, etc., and you import the microbit one with every program. The microbit module has lots of functions, such as sleep, checking if buttons are pressed, etc., all built in so you don't have to write them. You have also used the display module lots of times. For example, display.show or display.scroll. There are lots more functions that you can use in display that you can explore, such as display.on and display.off. So you can turn all the LEDs on or off. Search and find out what other functions there are in this module. This specific module will let your microbit send and receive data to and from other devices through a bus protocol. This is when you have another device that you want the microbit to control and is known as a slave device. Each slave device has a 7-bit address. This means it has a series of 7 bits that signify where it is. Without the address, your microbit won't know where or what it is. Each slave device will have its own rules to how you communicate with it. So you need the documentation that comes with the device to know how to communicate with it. But on the microbit, there are a few functions provided in the I2C module to help. The scan function looks for connected devices and returns the address of any devices. The read will read bytes from the address you give it as a parameter, and write will write the data you add as a parameter to the device whose address you also give a parameter. You don't actually need the word microbit in front of it, but it's used here to show you how it is part of the module. This module lets your microbit connect to a device that is connected using the serial interface, for example, by USB. USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. This module contains all the functions you need to communicate through the serial interface. Three of the fundamental functions in this module that you may need are dot .init, which initializes the communication, dot .read, that reads the bytes received, and dot write that sends the data in the buffer to the serial bus.